Jesus is the Lord and the King of Kings No one can compare to the joy he brings And when I am down and I'm feeling out He's the only one that I talk about Jesus is the Lord and the King of Kings No one can compare to the joy he brings And when I am down and I'm feeling out He's the only one that I talk about Hold up, wait a minute Let me get some Jesus in it What? Jesus in it What? Some Jesus in it Hold up, wait a minute Let me get some Jesus in it What? Some Jesus in it What? Some Jesus Hey, what's going on everybody? Uh, once again, you've joined me, Trevor Pope, for another episode of In The Word. Uh, I'm not going to prolong it. I'm going to get right into the Word. Uh, but before I get into the Word, I want to give you my topic on today. And my topic is, don't get it twisted. Yep, you heard it right. Don't get it twisted. And I'm going to be coming out of Ephesians chapter 2, and I won't be before you long. Uh, that's Ephesians chapter 2, starting in the first verse. And it goes on to say, And you have he quickened, talking about God, who were dead in trespasses and sins. So it says that you, we all have been quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Now, this is talking to those that are saved, those that are claiming Christ as Lord, that has uh, 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 surrendered their life to Christ. It says, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. That word course means a way, a path, or channel of movement. So it says, uh, in, in, past, in, in time past ye have walked according to the path of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedient, uh, where it says uh, the prince of the power of the air is talking about Satan. And there's many uh, places in the Bible where it references Satan as uh, uh, the prince of this world. Uh, Jesus said in John chapter 12, verse 31, now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. John 14 and 30 says, Hereafter, this is Jesus talking again, I will not talk with you, for the prince of this world cometh and have nothing in me. John 16 and 11 also references to Satan as the prince of this world. Uh, for 2 Corinthians 4 and 4 references to him as the God of this world. Check out that scripture when you get a chance. But it says that uh, uh, that work according to the prince of the power in the air, the spirit that now worketh uh, uh, in the children of disobedience. So he says, don't get it twisted. In time past, you had this same spirit that you now see in those that are disobedient. Don't get it twisted. Verse 3 says, among whom also we all had our conversation, uh, listen to that again, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature. That word nature there means character, disposition, birth, or origin. He says, by nature, the children of wrath, even as others. So he says, don't get it twisted. Just like those that we witness to, just to like those that we tell our testimony to and that we preach to we were just like them don't get it twisted don't forget where you came from verse 4 says but God who is rich in mercy that but is however even though we were like that God who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us even when we were dead in sins don't get it twisted there it is again even when we were dead in sins have quickened us together with Christ by grace ye are saved only by grace only by grace ye are saved. Don't get it twisted. Verse 6, and have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Verse 7, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Verse 8, for by grace ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. Don't get it twisted. You are saved through faith and not of yourselves. Not because of you. And, and I love this. And here it is. It is the gift of God. Not of works. Verse 9. Lest any man should boast. Don't get it twisted. It ain't got nothing to do with what you've done, the work that you put in, the work that you're getting ready to do. But it says that it is the gift of God. Lest any man should boast. 
we have nothing to boast about. Verse 10 says, For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God have before ordained that we should walk in them. And why am I preaching this today? Don't get it twisted. Because we need to understand that we are, depend on God 120%. There is nothing that we have done. There's nothing that we decided to do when it comes to salvation, when it comes to the opportunity to, to, to be used by God. And, and, and I wanted to highlight this and talk about this because God places on my spirit. Because sometimes when we witness to people and we talk to people or we preach or we tell about our salvation and what God has done and how we're living now, sometimes we can come off as if uh, uh, we did it all ourselves, as if if we just decided to get saved, as if we just decided to stop getting high, decided to stop fornicating, decided to stop committing adultery, decided to stop stealing, when in the fact of the matter is if it was not for the grace of God, if it was not for the power of God that changed our lives, we would not be living the lives that we are living today. Don't get it twisted. Sometimes I'm so discouraged when I hear people talk to other people or when I hear people preach and they come come off as if they decided to make themselves the way that they are, that they decided to change themselves when the truth of the matter is, is that, that they could not change themselves and that's why they needed Christ. That's why I needed Christ because I could not change myself. And I want to share a couple of scriptures with you. Philippians 2, 12 and 13. This is Paul talking. He says, wherefore my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence. Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. I don't want you to miss the next verse 13. He says, for it is God. Who is it? It is God which worketh in you. He worketh in you both to will and to do his of his good pleasure. That word will there means to choose. So it says God works in us to both choose and to do his good pleasure. So he works in us to choose his good pleasure and to do his good pleasure. Why does God work in us through his spirit the way he does? Why is he always uh, 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 constantly reminding us of things, constantly uh, having to speak to us through prayer or just through some random person on the street or through some message? Why? Because if it was left up to us, we would not be doing what God wanted us to do with our lives. So that's why through his spirit, he works in us to choose his good pleasure and to do his good pleasure. He compels us to make those right decisions. How many know I've been in places where I've made some bad decisions, but keep hitting that brick wall and God keeps speaking the same thing and keep allowing me to go through certain things. I chose to make that good decision. I, I chose his good pleasure and to do what was right because truth of the matter is if it was left up to me I would not have chosen to do the right thing John 6 and 44 says no man cometh no man can come this is Jesus talking to me except the father which have sent me draw him and I will raise him up in the last day listen you can't even come to Christ if the father don't draw you there's nobody on God's green earth that just decided to get saved. It was all in the plan of God. Don't get it twisted. Romans 8, 26 and 27. Now, I understand sometimes you hear people say, oh, so-and-so is a prayer warrior. This one is a prayer warrior. And I understand the sentiment. I know that the Bible says that we should always pray without ceasing. And you got some of those out there that they're always praying. They're always ready to pray, always on guard to pray. But sometimes in the sentiment that we use it in or the way that we use it in, sometimes we can make people as if, if they don't pray, certain things won't happen. Let me read what Romans 8 and 26 and 27 says to us. It says, likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities for we know not what we should pray what wait wait a minute wait a minute for we know not what we should pray as we ought that word ought means to be compelled by obligation or duty how many know we are compelled to pray it is our obligation to pray we should always be praying but it says that it says that for we know not what we should pray for as we ought but the Spirit itself maketh interception for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. 
It says, and he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the spirit because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. So the spirit intercedes on our behalf and prays for us and intercedes on our behalf according to the will of God. Why? Because sometimes we can think that we uh, 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 know what we're praying for and what we should be praying for. But a lot of times we pray for what we're going through. We pray for what we see on sight. But what, are, what about those things that you don't know that's coming? Those are the things that the spirit is able to intercede on on your behalf. So sometimes when we pop in our collars like we're the, the greatest prayer warrior in the world, the Bible says that all of us, because we know not what we should always pray, that the spirit intercedes on our behalf. Don't get it twisted. And I wanted to encourage somebody, listen, don't forget how much you depend and we depend on God as a body. Don't forget that if it was not for the grace of God, there go I, there go you, there go us. Remember that if God had not turned around my situation, your situation, we would not be able to speak his word, understand his word, have revelation of his word, wisdom of his word. So let's get out here and start showing the people God and not us. Let's let them know that listen if it was not for the grace of God if it was not for the gift of God I would be in the same position you are don't get it twisted come on saints let's humble ourselves amen let's come back down to reality and know that the Bible says that our righteousness is nothing but filthy rags and that's why we have to constantly depend on the Lord and know that if he is not in our lives or is not working through us there's nothing that we can do. I remember Jesus said in John 15, and I'm going to close. He says that if you don't abide in him and he abide in you, he says pretty much everything that you do it, it is pretty much worthless. It bears no fruit. Why? Because you can't do nothing that truly matters without the Lord. So know that I love you. Don't get it twisted. Be encouraged. Come on, saints. Let's do the right thing. Let's humble ourselves and let God have his way. May we decrease that he increase. I love you and God bless.